Hello there, John Britt here. Uh, today I thought I would try to show you again another color combination uh, on various bases and show you how we get different colors depending on what's in the base. All right, um, so let's get started here. So here are the colors uh, we're trying for. What we're trying for is here. It's chrome oxide 0.2 and tin oxide 7.5. And that gives us a classic color called raspberry at cone 6 electric. Okay, but it has to be in a certain base. Uh, so as you can see, these colors go from, uh, you know, pinks to pinky, salmony, even purpley right here to gray over here. And then we even can get like a, I don't know, greenish color back there, whatever that would be called, hedge apple green or something. And then here's some outliers from, from the situation. So, as you know, you can just take recipes and mix up glazes and see what happens. You can also learn uh, what oxides need to be present to get certain things. Uh, and, and if you were to do that, you may want to read some books. So there's a book, good book here called uh, Ceramic Glazes by Parmalee and Harmon. So it's a third edition. Uh, this book tells you many things. Many people aren't geared towards uh, scientific studies, but in this case it might be valuable because you can read on here chrome oxide. And so it says uh, barium and potassium will give hedge apple green, which we saw over here. And then it'll say um, barium and magnesium will give, um, I'll try to focus that for you, will give gray shades. So that's possibly going to be over in this area. These are all somewhat gray or purplish looking, pinkish. Uh, calcium and magnesium will give brown shades. Uh, zinc can make it gray or ruin the chromium color. Uh, and tin oxide will produce pinks and maroons. So you can read even more in depth than that, but then, th then you can start thinking about our tiles here. So if what I did was try to get a list of rules for you on this. To get raspberry or maroon, you want to have high calcium, and that means in the unity molecular above 0.7, or around 0.7, you want to have low zinc, low boron, low magnesium, and low alumina, and that will give you a reasonable burgundy. Now, uh, if so, say you had high alumina, then you would go to these two glazes. These are called 3M4 and G1214Z. Very high alumina. They got one alumina to five silica, and that makes matte glazes. So you can see that that is actually true. Ruins the uh, burgundy color. If I had these, many of these here are low calcium and higher magnesium. And by that I mean around 0.3 magnesium. And some have zinc. So uh, you can sort of analyze this on your own. Uh, oh. By the way, you can just Google these glaze colors and they'll usually come up on glazy.org. But if you need recipes, you can send me uh, an email, johnbrittpottery at gmail.com. And I have, a, I have a recipe list that I take to my workshops and they're all in there. I can just send you that. Okay, so let's say for instance we were concentrating on lower magnesium so that's all this set right here and you can this is our highest magnesium and that's in crawl glazes so this is lichen and this is one called brain crawl and that also has a bunch of boron I didn't write this stuff here I just 
I don't know why I didn't. I didn't have them printed out, but this is super high magnesium, and this is pretty high magnesium with some boron. So you can see it's getting a pinkish color. Uh, this one for sure is going to have problems because it has a bunch of zinc in it. And that for sure deviates from our rule, low zinc. Uh, and then, okay, so let's see. Here's another higher zinc, this uh, frosty mat. But we're still getting some, we're getting pinkish hue. Uh, not, I guess this, it's kind of a pink, pinkish purple. It's hard to tell. Hopefully this uh, picture you get will be accurate to the real tiles. Uh, you know, because I got these lights and everything. But this one here is definitely verging on the purpley range. And that's Randy's red. And that's definitely low calcium, so 0.36. And remember I said I wanted 0.7. And then we got medium borom and high magnesium, 0.45. So that's way above 0.3. So this is ways you can look at these tiles and then start to analyze them and see why they're that way. And then I talked about this high alumina. And these are seriously gray tiles. Uh, bat uh, <laughs> I call this battleship gray over here. This floating blue base uh, with the tin and the chrome. Uh, and so if we looked at the rules for this, this is very uh, low in calcium and it's high in boron. And so a decent amount of magnesium. And this one is low in calcium. So that these all follow the rules to not get a burgundy. And then it says pretty high on the boron also. And then a bunch of lithium in this one. And then lastly over here would be low calcium, lower calcium, higher boron. There's a reasonable amount of magnesium. And definitely gray for those. Uh, this one is, uh, I'm trying, this was a very light gray, and then this one's the darkest of these. I, I, I don't know if it's how it is to tell in this lighting. I think it's okay, though. All right, so, and I said these were, back here, were high barium. So in this case, I have, this is just auto and, Vivica's, um, uh, this one here is Auto and Vivica's uh, barium base, very straight up base, and then I substituted one for one for strontium to barium, so that way this has just strontium. Uh, for some people who don't like barium in their glazes, and, and strontium has no known toxicity. And then this one, which is a little lighter shade, is because the Pinel strontium mat, when we do the base, it also has titanium in it. And so the titanium is toning that and sort of making it whiter looking. Okay, these two back here, uh, Hannah's fake ash is high calcium, but there's a bunch of um, iron in there. So that kind of messes that up. And then this PV liner is also uh, an oddball because I'm not sure why it's so sort of greenish looking. I think there's other... Uh, impurities in plastic vitrox that uh, they don't list in the uh, percent analysis. And then this is an oddball one because it's Val Cushing's VC mat and it's uh, definitely low calcium and a bunch of lithium but it produces a, a strange uh, burgundy. I think what's happening is this, when I mix this up, we also add six titanium. And, there, and then the tin is in our colorant combination. And I know that sometimes titanium and tin will make yellows. And so right here on this edge, you get this yellowish color. And I think some way then it supports a, a getting a kind of a burgundy color. Okay? And that's why I was saying, Sometimes the books don't really tell you everything that's going on because we're adding all kinds of stuff. All right, so this one adheres to the rule. It's 0.8 um, calcium. I'm going to try to get the shadow out of there. It's 0.8 calcium, and it's called Raspberry from Mastering Cone 6. 
And uh, so they designed it for a burgundy. And they have 0.01 magnesium. That's very low. And a, a reasonable amount of boron is 0.15. Boron. Is, uh, that's, so that's a perfect glaze for this type of, uh, or base for this type of colorant combination. Okay. Now, these two are kind of odd, uh, but they do follow the rules. This one is lower in calcium. It's called John Straw Ash. Not a very good functional glaze, but it definitely turned burgundy. But it's low calcium, and, but very low alumina and silica. So that's not really listed in the book. But it also goes along with this one, which is uh, an ash glaze. And so an ash glaze ha usually has high calcium, which this does. Uh, and then low alumina and low silica. So what the deal with sometimes these ash glazes, see this ash glaze lo looks like it has uh, less calcium than this one does. This only has 20 in the recipe, 20 whiting. And you have 0.8 uh, calcium. This one has 30 whiting in it. Uh, but because these things are in proportion to silica and alumina, and these, this is so low in silica and alumina, it makes it look like uh, it's less calcium than that, but not, not the actual case. Just so you know, there's many ways to look at glazes. Recipe method, unity molecular, and then uh, percent analysis. So there's uh, different ways that people prefer looking at glazes. All right. I don't know what more I can say, but these are verging on pink. I don't know how well this lighting is, but um, so they may be, they may have like this one here, Seltzer Chun 2, has just a little bit of zinc, 0.1. So it's not, it, it's tolerating the zinc and producing a more a bur, uh, maroon shade but it's not completely as strong as say that one okay and the tamaku gold has a bunch of lithium so it's also verging on uh, but not very high in calcium see it's only 0.45 and let's see this odyssey is uh got a moderate amount of uh Calcium at 0.65, so it's a little under where we want it to be. And then, uh, so if we wanted to test something, we could take this recipe and try adding more calcium and see if we could get a better burgundy out of it. And then that's the way you can learn about how much to put in. Uh, this Raven Scrag is actually interesting because that's an interesting material. Looks like there's some iron in there or something, why it's turning that shade. But actually, uh, Raven Scrag has, uh, Tony Hansen uh, made up this recipe, I'm assuming, and it, they sell Raven Scrag clay up there uh, in Alberta. And um, they have a special recipe for maroon and it the he ups the calcium to 0.71 and then lowers the boron a little and then he gets a nice uh, bur, uh maroon with that recipe okay so i think that's about all i have to say on these little guys but i think it's really fun to see the wide range of colors you get from the same colorants in various bases all right Make a set of those and we'll see you tomorrow.